What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are back testing a new product again. We're testing a skin product. I feel like we have been like very skin product based product centric the last couple of, well, the last week or so here on this channel. Today we're going to be trying out the Milk Hydro Primer. Now I have actually already been trying this product for several days because I wanted to A, start trying it because I was really impatient and I wasn't ready to sit down and film yet. And B, I figured if I try it for a few days, I'll know, first of all, if I have any sort of weird reaction to it and also how it holds up under different circumstances. So what I plan to do today is do this video kind of get ready with me style. I will use the primer on my face, take you guys through that journey with me. And as we talk about it, I'll give you guys little flashbacks of clips that I filmed over the last couple of days of how my skin looked with this primer throughout the day as I wore it two days in a row under different circumstances and for different amounts of time. Before we get into the application and the little wear tests that I did, uh, I forgot to mention in those parts of the video what I think of the packaging and the size and the price and all that. So I'm going to do that now because um, that's important and I forgot. So the packaging looks like this. It has a cap. It's a green gel. It comes out clear pretty much well pretty much clear once it's on your skin it has a pump on the top which is excellent we love that for sanitation reasons i prefer this over a tube by far even though a tube you can technically keep it clean and sanitary uh, a pump is just neater and it's easier to keep it on your desk and just pump some out and not get any all over the tube and it just sits there all nice and neat Personally, for me, as far as base products are concerned, if it's a liquid, a pump is ideal. So this primer is 1.52 fluid ounces, which is from what I can tell, slightly above average in size for a primer. I looked at a few of my other primers that I had sitting around, specifically the Hangover RX, which was I think 1.35 ounces, and a few of my other primers were closer to one ounce, so that's a pretty large amount as far as primers are concerned. I personally ordered mine from Sephora, which gave me free shipping, and there's no tax in my state. So that brings it to an exact even $30, which uh, is a fair price for a primer in my opinion. As far as like higher end primers go, I think that is pretty good. So we're just gonna rewind back in time to a moment where I didn't have anything on my face yet. I'm gonna take you guys through parts of my makeup routine with me today as we chat about what I think of this primer. We'll do some flashbacks so you can see how it wore on me for the days prior and hopefully it gives you a good picture of what you can expect from this primer if you're on the fence about it. Before we get into that, please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a second because it really helps me in a big way, in like a big, big balloon-like gigantic way and I always tremendously appreciate it. And also if you're new here, if you've been like lurking around a little bit, maybe you've seen a few videos and you're on the fence about subscribing, please go ahead and subscribe. I would love if you would stick around for more videos. I think I gave you guys all of the information that you need before we get into it, but if there's anything I missed, if there are any questions that you have, and even if you wanted to like compare it to another primer that I might be familiar with, leave it in a comment down below. I will do my best to get back to all questions as quickly as I can. I don't always catch every single one of them, but I come damn close. Like I get almost all of them. And now that that's all out of the way, let's just get right into it and try applying this primer right to my face. Okay, so my skin is a little orange because I fake tanned last night. Uh, I'm not crazy about that, but that's okay because we're gonna put foundation on anyway. It is freshly cleansed and freshly toned. So we're ready for some makeup. Just clipping back my hair real quick so it's not in the way. What I've been doing is taking about two pumps of it, which turns out to be about that much. I could probably use a tiny bit less of it, but I have been bringing it down my neck as well. and just smoothing it into my face with my fingers. I've even been putting it like over the upper part of my eyelids before I do my brows and stuff. The first time I put it on, I was a little bit concerned because it feels as if you, if you rubbed it too much, it would ball up. Like it has that kind of like, almost like a rubbery feel to it. Not like silicone, but like, I don't know, it's got like a sticky kind of a feeling to it. And I was like, oh, if I keep rubbing this, it's gonna be something that pills up all over my face. But so far that hasn't happened at all. It feels really cooling when I put it on and uh, definitely hydrating, but maybe not as hydrating as some of the other primers that I like to use. I usually gravitate toward hydrating primers, which is why this seems so appealing to me to begin with. The ones I usually go back and forth between are the Smashbox Primerizer and the Too Faced Hangover RX. Those are like my favorite hydrating primers. For foundation today, I'm just gonna use the It Cosmetics CC Cream. For your reference, I am the color light. 
and I'm applying that with a damp sponge. The first day I wore this primer, I used this CC cream as my foundation, and I also did a little bit of the Milk Blur Stick in the center portion of my face because that's usually how I prime my face regardless of what the hydrating primer is. I like to also go in with the Blur Stick just in like the areas where I have the biggest pores because I find that it helps kind of keep the oil at bay a little bit in those areas. That's where I'm most oily, but also it smooths them over. Obviously, that's why it's called the Blur Stick. On the first day, as far as how my makeup looked, I absolutely loved the way my foundation was sitting. And I wore my makeup pretty much the whole day. Like it was just like type of like R&D day, nothing crazy, but also, you know, not just sitting home either. I was out and about doing things. And I felt like my makeup wore really, really beautifully. I don't feel like I lost any sort of coverage as the day went on, like maybe a little bit, but like, probably if anything less than usual. I felt like it gave me a little bit longer wear than I normally get. So this is how the IT CC cream looks applied over that immediately with a sponge. I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see the close up of what it looks like and how my pores look and stuff. I didn't use anything else in my pore area this time, so just keep that in mind. It feels like it gives everything a really smooth, natural finish. It doesn't make your foundation so much more dewy that it winds up breaking apart during the day, but I definitely feel a little bit glowier than usual when I use this. Keep in mind for both of these wear tests that I'm showing you little snippets of, I did the rest of my normal makeup routine. So I bronzed, I set my face with the Hourglass Veil Powder and I used the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray just like I normally would. So it gave it like a fair chance as far as like how it performs with whatever I normally use. That way it's a good way to compare it to like what I usually expect of my foundation to, you know, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So moving on to the second day of wearing this, I did a very, very light makeup day yesterday. It was basically just a base, a little concealer, some lashes and my brows because I was just hanging out and I had to go to the gym in the late afternoon and I knew that going to the gym with a full beat on was not what I wanted to do if I didn't have to. When I applied my makeup yesterday, I used the Hydro Primer, I used the same IT CC Cream Foundation, and I forgot that I don't really like the Fenty concealer with my hourglass powder. And I used that combination and I found that my under eyes looked a little bit creasy and I didn't really like the way they were sitting. So I can't blame that on the primer, but I also can say that if you have a certain under eye combination or some sort of a combination that you find is dry or sits in your limes, that you can't necessarily rely on the hydro primer to be so good that you're not going to have those issues. I still had the same issues that I usually run into with that combination of products while using this primer but the rest of my face sat beautifully and I was very happy with it throughout the day. After my workout, which I'll insert footage of that too, I obviously didn't keep this on super long yesterday because after my workout I really wanted to take a shower. It was so sweaty yesterday. Like I always go pretty hard at the gym, but I had some frustrations to take out yesterday and I went to spin class and I did 16 miles in 45 minutes, which is a lot for those of you who don't generally go to spin class. Like that's, that's, that's pretty far in 45 minutes. And I was absolutely drenched in sweat when I came home. So I was dying to take a shower. I was not about to give myself back knee to try to not wash off my face and do a longer wear test. But considering how sweaty I got during that class, I was very impressed with the way my makeup wore off. I definitely lost some coverage in some areas. Like if you look closely around my eyebrows, I lost my eyebrows yesterday. I used an eyebrow pencil. I didn't use anything waterproof and my brows were just mostly gone by the time I finished that class. But you could also see around my brow area, there's some redness coming through my skin. So I did definitely lose some coverage in my foundation, but nothing looked chunky. Nothing looked like it was coming apart, like in pieces. It really wore off gracefully. You can get like a graceful wear off or like a really ungraceful wear off. And I felt like 
the makeup sitting on top of the hydro primer wore off as gracefully as I could expect it to under the circumstances. I just did a quick look on the upper lids using the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette, which I did three looks with, by the way, if you haven't seen that and you would like to, I will link it up here on the screen. I'm just gonna go in on my under eyes with my Too Faced Born This Way Sculpting Concealer. As far as how my concealer sits on top of this primer, I would say that it's fairly typical. Um, I didn't notice it being any smoother than usual, but it's also definitely not any less smooth than usual. And I definitely didn't see any more creasing or any settling in my fine lines that I wouldn't normally expect with this concealer. So that's good, nothing like special, oh my God, amazing, my concealer looks better than it ever has, but, it's uh, works just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eyes with my Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder. I just have a little bit of it in the cap here and I'm gonna pick it up on a MAC, what number is this? Two, 18, two something, two, two this, this MAC brush. I never know the names because they always rub off and it drives me crazy. And that goes for all of my brushes. I don't think I have a single set of brushes in my possession that the handle has not worn off. One thing that I've noticed that I really like about this primer is that I find that when I first apply it, and maybe you could see this when we applied it on camera, I'm not sure, but it just gives my bare skin by itself such a nice, healthy look to it. Like I feel like it somehow brightens my skin right away as soon as I apply it. I'm not sure if that's because it has those botanical ingredients in it that kind of help calm any redness and stuff, but I really do feel like the moment I apply it, the dewiness of it is nice, but also my skin just looks very even and healthy and it's not like a blurring primer or anything, so I don't think that's why. I think it must be just kind of like the calming effect that they're talking about which I'm always so skeptical when primers or any skin products at all say like calming, reduces redness, because most of the time I really don't feel like I can notice anything, but I do feel like my skin looks especially nice when I apply this. So I don't know, maybe that's it. I'm gonna make my inner corner a little bit more interesting by going into the Elf J Kiss of palette. I'm gonna go into the shade Sway. I also did a video reviewing this palette, uh, spoiler alert, I love it. If you wanna see that, I'll link that here as well or I'll link it down in the description. I just wanna throw a little bit of that purple shade on the inner corner and make this look a little bit more interesting. I don't really even know where I'm wearing this look today or if I need my makeup to look interesting, but just for funsies. I'm gonna use the Max Spring Bling Powder from the Boom Boom Bloom collection. I really like it as a bronzer though, so I'm just gonna warm up the edges of my face with that. I'm gonna highlight with the MAC Hyper Real Glow in the color Shimmy Peach, I'm using my Nabla highlight brush and just applying that in the highlight spots. My only complaint is that on some areas of my face, mainly like directly on my under eyes, I feel like I could use maybe just a touch more hydration. But then again, that might affect how it makes your makeup wear. And you know, I can always go in with a little eye cream if I know that I'm going to be using this and my eyes need a little bit more hydration on the underneath portion because um, we, are, we are getting older friends and we're gonna have to really start concentrating on doing that anyway. Okay, I finished up my face with a little bit of blush. I added the House of Lashes Stella Luxe Lashes. I added a lip. I used the ColourPop So Juicy Plumping Gloss in the shade Intersection, which I am loving. I'm just gonna finish off my skin like I normally do with a little bit of Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. My bottle of this is so filthy. I'm sorry, I should have cleaned that before we started, but I didn't. I'm gonna add just a couple of squirts of Fix Plus to add a little bit of dewiness. That's my favorite combination for those of you wondering. I didn't really contour much today. I just bronzed. I kept it pretty simple because like I said, I don't really even know what I'm doing after I film this today. And now that those setting sprays are pretty much dried down, I'm gonna zoom us all the way in one more time so you guys can get a good look at how my face products are sitting on top of that primer. So now you have the studio version with all of the bright lights and you also got the natural light version. I think that's pretty thorough, no? So 
all in all, my overall thoughts are, so far I really like this primer. I think that it is probably going to become my daily primer because I am currently out of my other two favorites. The, the only small complaint that I have is for me, I feel like it could maybe be a tiny touch more hydrating, but honestly, like that, like at this point, I'm nitpicking. That's how small of a difference I would like to see. So overall, yeah, I think this one is a huge, huge win. I really like it. I will continue to use the rest of the bottle. I feel like it also would be really nice for no makeup days because it on its own makes my skin look really nice. Of course, as I continue to go through this bottle, if I run into any issues, if I feel as if it doesn't work well with certain products that I wind up using it with, I will keep you guys updated to the best of my ability. Usually that winds up happening on Instagram stories. So if you're not following me over there and you want those kind of updates, that's where those are at. Let me know your thoughts on this primer in a comment down below. Are you trying it right now? Have you tried it already? Are you thinking about trying it? If you have already tried it, what do you think of it so far? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to know what you think about it. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, if you found it helpful because that really helps me out and I always appreciate it. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe because I would absolutely be just tickled pink to have you around for future videos. If you want to keep up with me between videos, if you want product updates, like I mentioned, if you just want to see behind the scenes, PR unboxings, or you just want to see my other makeup looks and my lip art and all that stuff that never really finds its way to YouTube, go ahead and find me on Instagram. I'm at Miss Quinface over there as well. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one.